Hello, everyone, and welcome to CSA's webinar series, CSA Cloud Vice. Today's webinar is titled, A New Prescription for Cybersecurity. Just a few housekeeping items before we do get started. During the presentation, you have the opportunity to submit questions at any time. Use the Ask a Question tab that's at the bottom of your screen, and we'll reserve time for the end of the webcast to address these questions. Additionally, the slides from this webinar are not going to be provided. However, you can access this recording anytime by using the same link to view the webinar again. Today, I am joined by Chris Rogers from Qualys. He is the Director of Product uh, Management, Vulnerability Detection, and Response at Qualys. Chris has more than 15 years' experience in technology and information security. Previously, he was an information security engineer in charge of vulnerability management at Western Union, and before that, he held business and technical roles at Aero Electronics and Ryerson. He holds a master's degree in organizational leadership from the University of Denver and a bachelor's degree in leadership development from Texas A&M University. We also have with us BSA's very own Jim Rebus. He is CEO and co-founder of BSA. For many years, Jim has worked in the information security industry as an entrepreneur, a writer, a speaker, a technologist, and a business strategist. Jim has been published and presented widely throughout the industry. He's been an advisor on the launch of many industry ventures and has, um, has achieved successful M&A exit or IPO. Jim is widely quoted in the press and has worked with hundreds of corporations on their information security strategy and technology roadmap. Jim has a background in networking technology, marketing, as well as product management and systems integration. So we're really excited to have you all joining us for today's webinar. And without further ado, I'm going to turn things over to our presenters. All right. Thanks very much, Hillary. And uh, even, even though I sign your paycheck, you don't need to do that long of an introduction myself. Uh, basically. <laughs> well, all, that, all that means is that I'm really old and I'm probably past my prime. Uh, so, but, but welcome everyone. Uh, these uh, educational cloud bytes uh, um, seminars. And I uh, was uh, um, recently um, with Philippe Corteau, CEO of Qualys, and he had uh, Talk to me a, a little bit before the in, uh, announcement was made. Uh, I think at Black Hat about the yeah. initiative Wallace was uh, wanting to do, which I thought was very interesting. And so I'm really excited to learn more about uh, um, what we're doing. And I'm, I'm always excited about uh, things that could be uh, disruptive or new ways to do things. The new prescription for cybersecurity. And uh, th this idea of global visibility of, of yep. IT assets it seems like a very important principle. So I'm, I'm excited to have Chris uh, with us to, to, to go through this. And, and Chris, maybe before we get going in the, the presentation, maybe you can just sort of give us a, give a, a high level view of, of what we're going to talk about here. Oh, absolutely. Uh, thanks, for, uh, thanks for having me, Jim. I'm really excited and I'm really excited about this topic. This topic is really one that's near and dear to my heart, and uh, it's, a, it's a really cool topic. You know, when we're looking at IT asset management, we really are kind of – the big element that we wanted to look at with this presentation and a new prescription for cybersecurity was we recognize that IT asset management can be a massive headache. It can be almost debilitating to organizations, you know, well, I can't tell you how many times as an engineer that I'd be in a situation where I'd have um, one of my uh, executive team members would reach out to me on a Friday night. I'm about ready to take my wife out on a date. And uh, sure enough, they say, oh, my gosh, we have this, this vulnerability, and we got to take care of it right now. And, you know, the funny thing is, is that it, it is important because vulnerability management is, a, is an important thing. And IT asset management is an important thing. But what we would find is, is that we'd have to jump into our analytics and pull the APIs and pull all the data sets and make sure that we have ties with the SIM and ties with all of these different tools. And then we could come back and we say, you know, I'm 99.9% .9 sure that we're good. And then all day Monday and all day Tuesday, we're confirming. And then finally, the stress level goes down. And, you know, you're not sleeping that well on a Friday night. You're not sleeping that well the whole weekend because you want to make sure that you're doing your right. You want to make sure that you're really secure. So, 
So this was uh, when this opportunity came up, this, uh, it just seems right. It, what we really want to focus for you guys is a new way to look at things that is secure, that's discreet, that's not disparate. Yeah, so when I, uh, you know, think about this and think about where we're going over, over the next few years, I, it, visibility obviously seems to me just to be a huge mm -hmm. thing that we need to think about. And just pr on, on principle, you can't really solve what you can't see, and that seems to be Absolutely. so important. Uh, the, 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 the scale uh, is kind of scary when you see a lot of the predictions about how, how big we're going to see networks get and how many assets you are going to have on there and then you know, how do you prioritize and how do you really understand what that what's that heat map look like when you have a bigger and bigger and bigger asset base so you know, I'm, I'm hoping that we kind of what we get out of that is sort of understanding principally how how we are able to expand our visibility but mm -hmm. also to take that into something that is a very workable a remediation, a very workable prioritization, a very workable risk management, and able to do this. So, um, Chris, I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you uh, um, kick off. Uh, it looks like a, a great presentation, and then I'll uh, I'll let you know where I got questions and and, and clarification. I yeah. the audience will as well. So, I'll let you go. Sounds great. So, for all of you out there, the biggest thing that we really wanted to to really touch on first and foremost is there. We really want to be thankful and let you guys know that we really appreciate you guys spending the time with us. Uh, we know you have a lot of things going on, and that's not like I'm sure you have 15 things, and I'm sure a few of you guys are actually doing some of those 15 things while you're listening to this. So for that, thank you. Thank, we're really grateful. Now, with this, I want to start out by doing kind of a pulse check. And this pulse check itself is, you know, it's really stuff that it's kind of, it, I don't want to say redundant, but it, like we know that these are issues. When we're looking at credential misuse, cloud misconfiguration, on-prem misconfigurations, uh, critical vulnerabilities, zero-day vulnerabilities, unauthorized software, that's a huge one. How often, you know, we, we have all sorts of philosophies that exist within the IT uh, sector. There's some that, that say, hey, you know what, we're going to give a Vecto admin, we're going to give admin, we're going to give no admin. But sometimes we come through and we can get things through the cracks. As security professionals, we want to be really mindful that we're doing the right things at the right places. But that leads into unmanaged assets. Um, and in a lot of cases, if it's unmanaged, a lot of times it's unpatched. So when we're looking at these things, we have to identify them really regularly. And what we end up finding is, they come from different places. As I mentioned before, you know, we're talking, this is just a, a small group, and I'm sure that there's one of you guys out there that's like, oh, well, you missed this. It's possible. You know, the big thing is, is that we want you to see that there's a lot of different options, and every organization is different. And in fact, really, anytime that someone comes to me and talks to me about, say, hey, what's most important here, and what's most important here for my organization, the answer is always the same. It depends. It always depends on what is important to you. If you're in FinTech, it's going to be something that's going to be very different from healthcare. If you're in um, construction, maybe you're looking at something completely different altogether. You probably will. You're looking at HIPAA data. You're looking at P, uh, PCI, PII. There's some stuff that you, just, you don't want people to see. So ulti ultimately, IP is huge as well. Okay. So as far as this pulse check goes, we have a lot of data from a lot of different places. And you know what? There's some really great programs out there and some great softwares that exist. But you know what? At the end of the day, they cost a lot of money. And that they are, um, you know, that we don't always have that IT asset uh, budget to jump in and, and do different stuff. So here real fast, what we're going to look at is – the process of management of the past, of the past of the current, of the case. This is really a, a process that would happen pretty regularly, and I hope that I'm not alone. I don't think I am, though. I think that there's a lot of people who could probably um, come back. So we'll go back to that situation. You're about ready to go out. You might go out with your friends. You might be going out with your um, you know, significant other, but it's Friday night. 
And, you know, you, you want to value that time. We want you to value that time. So what we're looking at is you get that call from whomever is calling up, and they say, we need to make sure that we're clear. We can't get, uh, we can't get hacked. We can, with as many breaches and as many different things that are out there, it's a big deal. So this is a lot of times the way that it works. I'm going to scan the environment, or I'm going to take a look at the last scan that we had. I talk to customers all the time, and scanning pro, uh, profiles are all over the place. Sometimes they're weekly, sometimes they're daily, sometimes they're monthly. Heaven forbid that we have quarterly. Um, you know, that's a philosophical conversation that we probably want to have later on down the line or reach out to us and talk. But really, the bottom line is it all depends. It all depends on the organization. So we take a look at the report. And, you know, we're going to open up Qualys and, or maybe that you have an API and you're taking a look at it. And then you come through and they say, hey, I want you to look at everything. And so all of a sudden, oh, my gosh, I have, you know, 500,000 uh, vulnerabilities. And I need to go through all that data. And that data is all over the place. So I'm going to export the, the report or I'm going to try to do something with it. Maybe I'm working with something else. And then I'm going to wait. And then I'm going to take a look and I'm going to hope that the report's not too big. And then I have to take a guess at what's most important. And then really in a lot of cases, I'm looking at what the vulnerability is versus what the asset is. So I'm saying, hey, let's hope that everything's there. And, you know, we have a really good uh, background of making sure that our CVEs are up to date and making sure that they're going through. But sometimes you have something that hits just that moment. And, you know, that you want to see something before the CEVs even been uh, really been pushed out by NIST. So someone comes in, and we're going to talk about a case study that just came out the other day. But we go through all of this process, and then all of a sudden you get what you need, and you send it to your system admin. And what's the first thing that that system admin is going to say? Oh, okay, well, these, this site range is mine. Uh, you need to go to this person. It's simple in this case. We're just going to say, all right, I'm going to reach out to this guy. And this guy's going to come back, or in some cases, and this girl, this, uh, this professional is going to come back, and they're going to say, you know what, I don't have time for this. This is Friday night. I don't need to do this. So what do we do? We have to turn back around and call up our executive officer and say, hey, I need you to escalate this. And so that they, they end up sp spending the time to escalate it, and you're on a call, and you're doing all these different things. Bottom line is, is it takes a long time, and it's a headache. And Jim, have you run across that before, like with your clients and, and everything else? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think that uh, um, the policies may not be clear. It can be overwhelmed with the the amount yeah. of data and, you know, it's exactly this. So, you know, the big things that we're looking at here, a lot of people are using Excel. Um, there's nothing wrong with Excel but we know that there's limitations after about 40,000 units. If you're trying to do anything more than that, man, it gets tough. Uh, we could do SQL, but the problem with SQL is, is that you have to trust that the data is right. Um, there's, there's all sorts of really cool tools that are out there, but you still have to bring it in. And then you have to turn it, and you have to transpose it, and you have to do it. It's a headache. It's definitely a headache. All right. So when we are looking at overall strategy, of being proactive and reducing attack surfaces, which is what we want to do. We want to take all of that data and bring it down. We want to have a overall reduction. And so what we're looking at is, it's coming. We're going to immediately identify the vulnerabilities in production. That's what we want to do. We want to do that. We want to go from there. We're going to then go and identify the business risk. This is kind of where the crux of the situation is. Because in a lot of cases, what we find is, is that there's a lot of business units that exist. And those business units have different value. Maybe that you have all of your important data that's externally facing sitting in, Bombay, in um, Mumbai. And say that that data compared to what might be in Chicago are very different uh, risk and application elements. We want to make sure that we're taking a look at specific things at specific times. 
then we go back to our situation where we're notifying the asset owner and uh, we have to block the port to make sure that the, the, that vulnerability is taken care of because sometimes it just comes down to that we can't do much about that vulnerability, but we can cut off uh, the vulnerability at where it should be. And then finally, you know, we want to make sure that we're increasing the monitoring for continued uh, workload. It's just, I, I don't want to say it's natural, but it's kind of the progression that happens a lot of times. All right. So this is where we come in. And, you know, my heart in this conversation is really, really to make sure that there's no cloak and dagger here. We are providing to you this program free. It's not just free, it's free free, where you're at a place where you can download this lightweight uh, client that is throttleable, and then you can get up and going. If while we're talking that you wanted to go into, all you have to do is go to qualis.com uh, backslash inventory, and all that information is right there that just gets you up and ready to go. But in this presentation, I'm going to be talking to you about features, but then I'm also going to be talking to you about the process of the tool and why the tool matters and why you should listen. So hang in there with me because we're going to get kind of rolling here pretty fast, and um, I want to make sure that you guys get the best value out of your, out of your time. Hey, Jim, is there anything that, uh, that you think that's standing out to you right now? that's important that you think that we should touch base on? Yeah, I mean, I think that this is uh, the, the right flow. I, I think that I you know, just want to reiterate to people that this is, this is a, you know, we're, as a community at CSA, this is a shared responsibility we all have because we have supply chains. We have all these interdependencies. And, and this is not only something that's good for your organization, but we all want to think about being stewards for, uh, for the rest of the world, and we know that um, hidden assets can be used to attack um, other places. It can be used to do, you know, cryptocurrency mining. It can be do, doing all sorts of things. So even although you have a primary responsibility to protect your own organization, you have a secondary responsibility to protect uh, the other organizations from from malicious behavior that might be emanating from yours. So. You know, I just I think it's really important to, to understand we we've got this capability that is is something Qualys is giving to the community that you can use to to help yourself and raise the baseline more broadly. Long time, we're experts in the field, and we really have your best intentions in mind. You know, at the end of the day, doing something for free, there's a risk involved in there. It's like that there's time involved for us. But we want to make sure that you guys know that we've got skin in the game here, too. So all together, when we're looking at kind of the purpose of this tool, is that one of the catchphrases that goes all the way around, whether it's in the cloud or on-prem or wherever, is the single pane of glass. There's lots of tools out there. And there's some good tools. But at the end of the day, there's not many tools that are free. There's not many tools that you're not going to have professional services hours that are in there. Let me remind you that Qualys Corporate Concept is that we do not charge for professional services hours. That's a big thing to us. We want to make sure that you know that if you need help, we have people to help you. Uh, Jim, how many people, how many companies have you run across that, that can quote that and say that? Well, there's not really that many. It's like, as far as I know, uh, I, I think that we're kind of one of those uh, great white buffaloes in a lot of cases. So we're looking at uh, the asset, but what, what we are seeing is, is that that single pane of glass is difficult. And it's difficult because we have on-prem, we have public cloud, we have hybrid multi-cloud, we have containers, we have IoT, we have end-user computing, and they usually have different departments and they have different groups that are out there. It, um, it's all over the place. So it's kind of one of those that we want to make sure that we're all doing the right things at the right time. First and foremost, our biggest thing that we want to go after is normalization and categorization. All right, so this is a little bit about me. I am an analytics nerd. I love data. I love taking a look at it. It's probably why I'm doing what I'm doing. But when we look at things, historically, some of the things that we've run into in the past has been 
we get this really specific tight data that falls in. Probably could even look at uh, reports and that they see this super detailed, which we're going to get to here in a second. But you see that it's, hey, it's Windows, um, such and such a, an operating system, R2 version, blah, blah, blah. And then the next one is R2 version something else. And we're coming back and we're trying to normalize it. And you can normalize it with the contains, and the contains are fine, but then you have to get really specific. So you create these contains indexes and it gets kind of it gets a little bit tricky in there so we really what we want to do is is that we want to eliminate variations in the product names so what we did is we're going to talk here in regards to our search bar we have a search bar that's just real simple it's taken very similar to a lot of other tools that are out there and uh, we're really proud of it we think that it's almost almost like having a natural query language you put in there operating system equals windows Operating system equals Windows 2008 server. Operating system equals Linux Ubuntu. You know, there's some really easy, simple stuff that's right there. Jim, any thoughts or anything that, that's standing out to you? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think this is only going to get more uh, diverse and complex. I mean, the barrier to creating uh, new assets and just taking a Raspberry Pi and things like that, and all of a sudden you've got yep. something that's unrecognizable. Um, I think also, you know, the, the cloaking that uh, some um, malicious people might do in putting in you know, skimmers or other yep. sorts of things would be very interesting and, and challenges for us. Well, you know, I, it's funny you say that because one of the things that I was uh, – I, I have a, a vast network of friends who uh, live in the Twitterverse, and one that I saw last night that was really pretty amazing was – and it just reminds me of how regularly – even when people are talking, you know, just what a difference a, a space makes. If someone's sending out, um, someone sending out a uh, file path, and you can make a whole new file path uh, just by putting a space in there. Those are things that are important because it just comes back to this point of saying, hey, maybe I want to download something, and if I don't have this picked up right, I go somewhere totally different. And so those are important things. But when we're looking at normalizing, enriching, and uh, cataloging, if we look at the top, the asset, the raw asset data, like we talked about before, we have Windows 2012 R2. You know, that, that's all over the place. But, you know, sometimes we want to be able to break it down to say, hey, I want to look at the operating system. But sometimes when, if we're talking in the world of vulnerability management, sometimes the vulnerability is not sitting on the operating system. Sometimes it's sitting on the software that maybe that you're looking at a SQL server. We're going to look here in a, in a little bit about this case study that has a SQL server uh, situation. And a lot of times people just look and say, hey, um, hey, I've got this end of life operating system. And uh, what we end up looking at there is, is that we say, well, I'm not going to patch it because that operating system's end of life and I don't have to worry about it. But the truth of the matter is, is that first and foremost, we want to have good operating system hygiene you really, um, you know, a lot of this is not just IT asset management, but a lot of it's financial asset management. A lot of it's FP&A. You know, we should be interacting with our PMs. We should be interacting with our FP&A teams uh, to be able to go out there and amortize so that we can say, hey, I have X amount of operating systems that are having problems, and then we go from there. Um, so, Chris, there is a question from the audience, which I think you're going to get to further on, but just to make sure yep. you cover it, you know, what about the devices where you can't uh, install any type of an agent, uh, IoT sorts of things? And I, I think you've got that, something yeah. that we're covering. Yeah, we'll, we'll be talking on it here in a little bit. We do have passive agents, and we have passive scanning that's available um, as well. But let, let's touch on that here in just a little bit. Um, really, so the big thing here is, is that we're not just taking a look at a two-dimensional platform we're looking at things in a three-dimensional light. Um, that's something that I think has been missing. And I will tell you this. To my knowledge, I don't know of another platform, another program, another company that's out there that's giving EOL information that you don't have to build. We do it. We give it to you. And it's available for you. That's huge because you don't know what you don't see. And how often do we run into our engineers who come in and say, this is junk. 
This is all EOL. This is all this. We're giving you information so that you can make better decisions. All right. Let's move into... Sorry, guys, the, the presentation's going a little slow. All right. Um, so now what we're going to be looking at is our um, going into compliance elements. You know, there's a lot of times, as we mentioned in this last, uh, the, that last slide, is, is that we have situations where there's departments outside of ours that are interacting with things. We have situations where audit comes. You know, historically speaking, I was at a company in the past where we had a very strong internal audit teams, and it was very important to us to make sure that we were on the up and up and making sure that we were doing the right things. And because that there's a lot of implications. With our global IT asset management, uh, we can provide in-depth visibility to your organization so that you can see and that you can go through. And when someone says, why does it work this way? You can answer that question and you can say, hey, I can show you that because that we're doing, whether it's, hey, we put the agents on a gold standard, we have passive sensors, we have other elements that are there. What we end up having is you have a really simple and easy way to say we have visibility. Um, the searching capabilities, as I mentioned before, you know, it's, it's very close to a natural query language. We're going to talk here in just a little bit. I'm going to show you exactly what that looks like. But the nice thing is, is that rather than having to go through and figure stuff out, some of you guys, though, don't want to have uh, to write a search, a QQL search. So if you're looking at this slide, you're going to see on the left-hand side that we have just tagged dropdowns. Hey, I want to see anything that's superseded or that's not superseded that's at the front of the line. I want to see anything that's Windows. I want to see really cool and they're really powerful for us to be able to get quick and, and uh, tangible results. Um, as we're seeing, we're getting this detailed asset information. We're looking through and we're, we're digging in. It's widgets. There's a lot of tools that are out there that are talking about, hey, you can build this and you can customize this. We allow you to customize really well. But on top of it, we're not just saying, hey, customize and, tell, and you can tell us what's important. We're going to come back and we're taking that role as the trusted advisor to you guys to say, hey, listen, every organization is different, but there's a lot of things that are the same, and we're going to let you know what we think that's important. Where this comes in really handy is download the, download the agent for free, take a look at everything, and then from there, you start getting the results that you need without having to spend weeks and months and professional services hours and all these other things to get what you want. You know, it's really nice. All right, so I'm going to stop here real fast and kind of put out some questions. We alluded to this a little bit, and what I'm really trying to do is kind of make a little bit of kind of like a cake where you fold it back and you bring it back forth before you bake it. Um, you know, earlier, to, earlier we were talking about the different uh, versioning. Jim, did you know that there is like, this is just a subset of some of the Windows versionings. And we, we used Windows because it's really universally, everybody really understands Windows well. But can you believe that there's this many versions just in this sample, just for oh. what, two different operating systems? It's, it's mind blowing. It's almost as though uh, every different Windows asset you have is different in some little way. So it's crazy. Yeah, it, it's pretty nuts. You know, some of the things that we end up coming through is like in this case, it's not Windows, but you know, we run into situations all the time that unless that you have a really strong data scientist or you have someone who's really good with analytics, you know, someone comes in and says, "Hey, I want SQL Server." And you say, well, do you want 2012, which is actually version 11? Do you want 2012 R2, which came in 2013? Do you want 2016, which is a version 13? You know, there's a lot of different stuff out there. And, you know, I'm hopeful that you guys are seeing the value and seeing, hey, these are some of the answers that we're answering. But going back to the other one, one that I know it's goofy and everybody, like, you know, some people like Pomeranians. For me, I really dig end of life because it's something that was – really mind-blowingly altering 
in my career to be able to start using that and changing the process and the dynamic in the organization. People started looking at it and it really started turning the needle. And uh, I saw that my CISO was really, really thankful that we were able to start breaking things out um, and go from there. So a question that uh, came in uh, has to do with asset ownership and being able to identify that, which is certain yeah. um, it's an important part of the remediation. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things that with asset ownership, it falls into that it depends category. Now, we're going to talk here in just a little bit about that we do have tags that we can create similar to what uh, Azure and AWS have, where we can come back and say, hey, this site or range or this location or this such and such happens to be, um, happens to have these, uh, these assets. We really believe that we're going to give you locations, but we also want this needs to be hand in hand. In a lot of cases, there's IPAM, situ uh, IPAM uh, connections, but I'll also tell you, we'll get to this here in a second, we do have bilateral um, connection with CMDB. So that's it for a lot of these uh, mature organizations who really have that lined out, that's awesome. For other ones, sometimes you run into situations where you say, you know what, uh, Mike has these, this cider range, or even worse or better, this group of assets with, which lie within the cider range. We allow you to go in there and just make those quick changes and say, hey, let's do this. We'll set up a widget and you're ready and good to go. You know, um, the big thing about this slide that I really wanted you guys to see is that I, I know we've talked a lot about EOS, uh, EOL. I know that you guys know that I really like it, but one thing that's really important is that you can exclude a lot of things, and that's really important to me. That's important to a lot of organizations, depending on what's going on. Um, yeah, and I'm seeing the install process uh, straightforward. Uh, and can it be scripted? Yes and yes. It's uh, very straightforward. You just download uh, whether or not you're going to, um, to any of your cloud instances go to their marketplace, download it, and you're good to go. Kubernetes is uh, supported as well, and Docker's. And um, so, cool. Before we jump into what the tool does, and I know that we're, you know, we're about halfway through, I want to see, Jim, what are your thoughts so far? What are your, do you have anything that's standing up? Um, it's, uh, um, you know, I, I think that it's uh, just a, great capability and it's a lot of stuff here you know when i talk to people about that that are it's compliant environments it's like if i if i increase my knowledge about my network i really got to be able to have very streamlined um solutions and remediation yep. is you know what comes yep. up it's almost like ignorance is bliss i don't have to go uh fix it if i don't know it. Um, and the the one thing we're we're unleashing quite a bit of visibility and knowledge and capability. It's real important. We, we get that into the right workflow. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Hey Ashcock, I'm seeing you from 7-Eleven. Thank you for writing. Um, you're asking in regards to asset management. I'm sure that there's probably some of you that are like, dude, this is old news. The thing about this is that we're going to go into the tool itself right now, and we're going to be digging into what the tool looks like, and you're going to see this big difference that exists between um, what's in asset management. Asset management was kind of the precursor of what we're doing here. And run down the street. Um, we hope that you really like it. Okay. So when we're looking here at the global IT uh, asset management, so there's some things that are here that are really, really cool. And, um, and really, at the end of the day, um, when do you get a chance to go through and take a look at a, uh, a sales type presentation where you don't have to make a sale? It's just, it's free. It's there. Like we're talking about what the, what everything is and how you get to it. In this case, when we're looking at the asset summary, we're going to take a look at the, the map is going to be sitting right there. There's an awful lot of time that we run into situations where we see an IP, we see an asset, we see, uh,
you can tie it down specifically to a tag. Um, and, you know, we, we really do believe in tags. We think that they're great. We think that there's a lot of value to it. There's a lot of our uh, competition and our partners that use tags as well. And we think that um, it's a really good way to go. Okay. So next what we're looking at is we have the system information. This is kind of cool altogether because what we're seeing is, is that we're getting deeper than just what is it. But presented what's going on with it. You know, what's the volume usage, the operating usage? You know, we're not going to show the services and users, but we can see what users are, are being uh, noted to it. You know, there's a lot of customization that we can do to this, and it's, we're really proud of it. Then we get into the, the really the, the meat of the case. How often do you run into a situation where you see that something's sitting on a hypervisor, but you're like, gosh, I wish I knew what the, um, you know, in some cases what the external source on it was, what the internal source on it was. The hypervisor has an IP, but, you know, what's, what's this, uh, the IP, the IPv4 that's going with it? You know, with this, it gives you just really clean cut, pane of glass uh, note, and it's, it's simple. We're not giving you a ton of information, but we're giving you the right information. And here we come in. We're going to start getting into a little bit of some SIM stuff. And here's the thing. We are not necessarily saying that you should ditch this free product, that you should ditch your very expensive SIM tool for our free product. We love it. We think it's great. We stand by it. But what we are saying is, is that sometimes that person who's on, say, like a cyber fusion team or that person who's sitting in the IR team may be sitting in a different place. Maybe you're not in the SOC. Maybe that you're part of the architecture team. And in those cases, what we're saying is, is that, hey, we're, we're putting, the, putting your shoes in and saying, hey, have some power, have some, some latitude. But in the same instance, those guys in the SOC, they can take a look at this stuff too and that they can jump in and they can, they can run with it. Um, the install software, this is going to come in really handy for you guys. When we're looking at this, uh, so far we've talked about five or six different, different solutions that CISOs are buying separately, that they're going out and they're saying, hey, we want this and we want this and we want this. In this case, we're providing it for you. We're coming back and saying, hey, here's the publisher, here's the product, here's the versioning, so that when you're looking through on that Friday night at 9 o'clock, that your, uh, your CISO can be happy, that they can rest well, you can rest well, and you can say, I know exactly what we have. We're going to get it taken care of. All right. Uh, Jim, any thoughts or anything so far? Well, I don't think you're enthusiastic enough about what you're talking about. Chris, <laughs> no, I, I think it's great. Yeah. I think that you know, this, is what, this is what the practitioners need is this ability yeah. to be wrestling with the technology, but for the technology to be enabling them. Yeah. And the truth of the matter is, is that why I get so jazzed about this is because we are at a spot where it's integrated. We have one tool that you're not having to tie APIs and you're not having to do all these other things. At the end of the day, our job relies on trust. Our job And it sure is terrible to be in a situation where something's misconfigured and you know, your big boss comes walking in the door and they say, give me the report. And then you come back and you find out, oh my gosh, something was misconfigured. And then you have to show up and you have to give them the, be like, hey, can I have that back? Because I think we're wrong. And they've already talked to their uh, CIO and CEO and all of these things are there. In this case, what we're looking at is, hey, I'm giving you the network traffic, the summary of all the assets in the real time of what we're looking at. You know, you don't have to rely on those multiple products. You can if you want. You know, we're a big fan of check but verify and um, trust but verify. But, in, but I think that you're going to find that you're going to trust us because we have some good stuff and we're doing some good stuff with you. All right. Um, and then here, this is cool just by itself. I know for myself in my past experience, I would take a look for the EC2 environment uh, information just to have it all in one single place, you know, I'd, 
I'd pay a bunch of money just to have that. And in fact, I do think that there are solutions that just do this. So it's pretty cool. All right. Now what we're looking at is we're going to talk just a little bit about the custom tagging. What you're going to see is, is that in the – we're jumping back a little bit, but I wanted to make sure that we tied it into the EC2 instances because that we do integrate with our AWS environments that you can pull and take a look at the, uh, at the tags that exist in the AWS environments, but you can also take a look at the tags that exist here. So when we're looking at it, you're not set to one tag. You could have 50 tags, which personally I think that it depends on your posture as an organization, but you really want to make sure um, uh, you want to make sure that you, you have it in the right place. Um, let's see. So the question said, uh, where can I have a look at this again? I didn't follow how to find traffic summary. Uh, the traffic summary is actually really nice and easy. I'm going to move to this next page here um, where we're going to come back. And what we're going to see is right above where the highlight is on the left-hand side is the traffic summary um, dropdown. All you have to do is just click on it, and it's right there. And the nice thing is, is that it's per asset, and it's really simple. All right, so we're going to kind of change up our cadence just a little bit. And at the beginning of this whole thing, I said, I didn't want this to be a cloak and dagger and, hey, buy our product. We're making some assumptions. So in the next couple slides, what we're looking at is we want to talk about the pivoting abilities of this tool to where it can actually um, – so where you can actually use it with other tools. This has been a big selling point and a big element that's been really big for us because we really want to make sure that this isn't just another tool that you have to jump into another uh, location. Um, so what we're looking at here is, hey, I had a situation in which I had a vulnerability on a Windows box or I had a Windows box, and, I, and I'm making the assumption that a lot of you guys are vulnerability management um, customers. But what you can do is, is that you can go in and you could say your CISO comes in or your pen tester comes in and says, hey, we just set up this new box. We want to make sure that, that this is right. We want to make sure that this is really smooth and easy to go. And so you could come in here, check it out, and be like, hey, man, Looks like um, in this case, I probably wouldn't tell them, hey, go ahead and set it up for gold standard. You might want to go back in and, and take a look at these 12. But the cool thing is, is that you're not looking at 50,000. You're looking at 12. So you go in, you click on it. It takes you to that uh, QQL area. You can check it out and say, yes, I like it. I like it. Let's get rid of it. Let's, let's use our patch management. Maybe you, you have your own patch management. We're really proud of our patch management program. But in the same instance, we recognize every team and every opportunity is a little bit different. So in this case, it's a really quick pivot. All you're doing is clicking on uh, the asset and you're going to the vulnerabilities. Jim, anything that you want to jump into? Oh, I, I think that uh, you're going uh, pretty well. I wanted to make sure that we answered. Uh, there was also a um, question just wanting yeah. clarification about the uh, um, do we need a cloud agent here? Um, do you need to have VM license act, um, activated, um, or does it work without that turned on? So VM license is not necessary. Um, all of these that I'm going to be showing you are not necessary. You can actually just upload them. This is free, free. But what we're showing is is that we're yep. showing the um, the benefits if you do have them. You know, once again, we're not going to be banging down your door and say, now that we gave you something free, give us something. You know. Yep. We want to have a partnership with you. But, um, yep. yeah, as far as analytics tools, we personally uh, will report the data, but not the actual back end on it. So we're really – we want to make sure that, you know, we're giving you some information, but in the same instance, you know, it is going to be bidirectional to the CMDB. But in the same instance, we don't – we're going to protect some of our stuff, especially since it's a private – it's a uh, public tool. It's an open source tool. Um, let's see, are you saying that the software will show software's EOL and, and allow us to find them and go out and update what's needed, with, even if that's with another program? Absolutely. You know, what you can do is you can take a look and you can say, I want to see 
the software uh, OS of, um, we'll show you here in a second, but I want to show you the software for SQL Server 2012. And it's going to say this was EOL on this time, this was EOS on the other. So everybody knows EOL is going to reference that the, the product is no longer sellable. EOS is that it's no longer supported. This is something that's really important for organizations, for their, uh, their, their hygiene, that they're looking through these things and they're taking a look at everything because sometimes that they don't do the extended uh, EOL. And sometimes at the end of the day, the EOL extended is going to give you support, but not updates. So that's, that's kind of important. All right. Uh, we've got about 15 minutes. I want to make sure that I'm honoring your guys' time. Uh, we're going to clump in a lot of these other tools that we really, really like. We really think that they're great. Our patch management tool, uh, we'd love to talk to you about patch management, threat protection, incident of compromise, uh, certificate management. We stand by them, and we believe that they're great products. But that's not why you're here. If you'd like to talk about them, please reach out. Talk to your Tim. You're welcome to reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to talk to you about whatever. But we're talking to you about why this is free. Just know that you can go through and you can set up patching rules. You can do all sorts of stuff. And it's, you know, it's important. Um, you know, we do talk in here a little bit. We talked earlier in regards to the uh, security compliance assessments. We do allow for security compliance assessments. They're really great. Um, it, once again, it's another module that through our FEM integrity. And, um, and we think it's awesome. Uh, how is this product different from the Qualys Vulnerability Management Module? And how is it offered as a side-by-side -side, uh, add-on? And is it offered as a side-by-side add-on? Yes, it is. Uh, up at the top of the page, you'll always see uh, our headers are always going to stay the same, as most of you know, that you're going to have the drop-down for the different uh, modules. If you don't have it immediately available, reach out to your CAM, and they'll make sure that they, that they get that taken care of for you. But how is it different from the Vulnerability Management Module? It is different because it's giving you asset-specific versus vulnerability-specific uh, data. All right. And then once we talked about, uh, in this case, we happen to, I happen to pull a ServiceNow CMDB, but we do, uh, we do integrate with multiple different CMDBs, HP, all sorts of places all over the place. And it's really important that you guys know that they're not just one, but, you know, we've got good relationships with other CMDBs. And... We think that um, as much as we'd like for you to come and do everything with us, we also recognize that there's So I'm going to cycle off a, a little bit. We have about 10 minutes left, uh, a little bit less, and what we're going to be talking about is the remediation cycle. The remediation cycle, we're not going to spend a ton of time on it, but I do want you guys to know that there's some really important things when we're talking through this remediation cycle process that it's really important that we have. First and foremost, we want to make sure that you know what is there. This is, um, this is really the key to this conversation. This is where it fits into the conversation. The asset inventory is critical to know what exists before you can go after vulnerability management. You don't want to send your teams and updates that's there. If, you, if the wrong people are getting the data, and we know the type of data that's open based off of the asset inventory. Then at that point, what we're looking at is that those people can utilize these, as I said before, the vulnerability management, the threat risk and prioritization and patch management are going to be additional add-ons that we'd love to talk to you about. But the threat risk and prioritization, what happens is that they come in and you say, okay, I've got 50,000 of them that happen to be in this group. Heaven forbid, but I've got a bunch of them. Now I'm going to go into threat protection, and threat protection is going to say, hey, these are all the celebrities. These are all the really, really, really highly important ones. Let's take care of this. And we have multiple data sources that are coming in with threat intel from all over the world that are coming in and say, hey, you should check this out. If you haven't seen our threat protection module, I would highly encourage it. And then finally, we take a look at patch management, and we say, hey, listen, you know what? 
if you choose to, which we'd be honored to, that you go into our patch management and we set, set up some patching processes. We say, hey, listen, we recognize that once a month we're going to have this patch cycle that's going to come through, and we want to make sure that it's right. We want to make sure that it's in the, in the best place. So, but it does lead us into this conversation. And, Jim, I want to just sit on it for a second. I need you guys to know that beyond philosophical conversation, clean patch management is essential. I know that We have WUSs, we have uh, Windows, we have Linux, we have all sorts of, you have Red Hat, you have um, Cisco, it's all there. But I continually see these clients and customers who are coming in and saying, well, we have to go through and push them individually. I personally would like to challenge whoever's there to have a deep and meaningful conversation with your leadership about what are the things that you can set up rules for that we're not saying that anything that you push all patches. That's a, that's a poor idea. But if you do have a situation where you could push some patches and instead of having to push 80 patches, you push 20 patches and that you're managing those and you're, you're marking those. That's a really big, uh, that's a big element. Uh, Jim, have you run across this? Like, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean, we always talk about the very exotic threats and the protections needed. And a lot of times it just comes down to the basics, even the stuff that we're expecting to see in 2020, the big attacks in cloud. Effective patch management is going to, like, take out a lot of them. But there is a, a big problem in the complexity of, hey, you've got to do the regression analysis and all these sorts of things make sure the patch really – good processes, we got to do this quicker, yeah. but it really is like basics. Don't, you know, be looking at the super exotic AI based attacks as much as the basics. I mean, certainly want to look at everything. Mm -hmm. And that's why I want to reiterate, this is not for every patch. This is very specific, but I have a good friend of mine who will always say, if you did it once, you should automate. If you did it twice, you should have automated to begin with. But if you do it three times, you probably want to check to make sure that your processes are right. And so that's where we're coming back to this place of automation is really key and imperative if you can. If you can't, make sure that you're in line with your compliance and your audit and everything else. We don't want you breaking systems, okay? Um, we don't have a ton of time, so we're going to jump through. I'm going to jump into this case study. I don't know if you guys saw this pretty recently. Uh, I believe it came out on Monday. But it was a beautiful case study. And if you guys have not seen this, check your system. Download Qualys, take a look at it, and make sure that you're not sitting with um, SQL Server um, version 12 or version uh, 11. These are what we're finding is, is that we have Chinese cyber spies that, um, at the bottom of this page, and you can come back in. We'll, we'll provide this. Um, this link if you'd like, or you can even just take a look at this. I pulled this off of ZDNet. And um, what we're finding is, is that, hey, what we found is if, for the most part, if you're using version 12, version 11, there's a really quick uh, backdoor that these guys can, uh, that they can come in and they can use. What we're doing is, is that we get the call. We, or, or you guys, forensics, you're taking a look and someone's like, hey, See at the top, operating system is SQL, and the software is version 11 or 12, okay? And then at that point, we're going to do very similar to other products the last 30 days. You know, you could actually take a look at the last 60 days, but the thing about it is, is that if something hasn't picked up in, in uh, 31 to 60 days, you know, you probably want to have a different query for that. Um, we're looking at what we're going to see here real fast. I'm actually going to take a look back. I'm going to go through and say, hey, I've got this guy here, and I'm seeing these are all the ones that are popping up. I'm going to jump into it, but I'm going to just show you. If you're looking here, hey, is SQL Server 12? Jump on. Now, at this point, like we've talked about, 
we would love for you to talk to us about our patch management process, but in a lot of cases, some of you don't have it. So at that point, you jump in, you say, we've got these patch management, uh, we're gonna take care of it, we're gonna uninstall it, we're gonna fix it. But in this case, there was 27 in this environment. Uh, that's pretty reasonable and easy to fix and do something with. Jim, any thoughts? I know we, we're getting down to the line. No, you're on a roll. I totally agree, keep going. Yeah, so the current process that exists, as we've talked about, we've, we've circled, we've cycled, we've gone through all of these things. And what we find is, is that the current process says that we're gonna go through, we're gonna figure out what we need to do, we're gonna look at versioning, we're gonna try to check it, we're gonna look at disparate sources. And in a, in a situation, I'd say you're probably looking at about four to eight hours. Now, we're making the assumption that you're using all of our products that we love, but once again, this isn't about our products right now. This is about this free tool that we're offering you. And so we're saying, hey, you're gonna go through, you're gonna take a look at that, you're gonna check them off, you're gonna go through to patch management, create a rule, say, hey, at this case, you know what, we're gonna uninstall it, but then we're also gonna talk to our teams, to everybody there, and say, hey, we're just gonna update it to um, version 13, version 14, the newest version, and we're good to go. All together, you're looking at 30 minutes to an hour, and that is with hand-holding and talking and doing everything else. What I showed you on the, those last two literally took me less than 30 seconds to identify and go from there. You can export it, it's really simple. All right, so just to kind of take a look at when we're looking at practical next steps for all of this, you know, these are the things that we have to consider. Do we have a PFC? Do we have a PN evaluation? Do we have all these things? And do we have these meetings? And do we have these things? And the issues at hand is at the end of the day, a lot of times we don't have money. A lot of times we have money once a year and it's not right now or it's in a couple months or it's a couple of years, you know, because we're tied up. What we're trying to come back to and what we are coming back to and what we are offering is this passive cloud container scanner agent that's free and ready for you. And that's all I got. I hope you guys enjoyed the, the time. I hope that it was cohesive for you. It was really my joy and my pleasure to be able to provide this for you. And especially where I'm not having to ask you for money, but um, just for your uh, appreciation and gratitude. Jim, that's, that's what I got, bud. Well, Chris, that was a tremendous presentation. And I, I could tell that people have stuck around. There's obviously a lot of uh, Qualys advocates that are, and, and people that are really understand your products quite a bit that are here. You know, for someone who hadn't, has not had a similar capability, you have any guess, like on average, how many like, surprising assets they're gonna find? I mean, what, is, what, is it, oh, what does it look like out there? What's, what's underneath the underline? You know, I think that the biggest thing that people have to be, be willing to know is, is that, especially when we're doing something groundbreaking and something new, you're gonna find mess. But the best way to make a clean room is by sometimes messing it up first and separating what you need to separate. Know that you know if you go down this, if you take the proverbial pill, you're gonna find that there's gonna be some stuff that you may not like. But at the end of the day, it's gonna be great for you because you're gonna, maybe it's gonna help you keep your job. Maybe it's gonna help you promote, get promoted. Maybe it's gonna help you look like a superstar. And those are the things that we want to see from you. All right. All right. Chris, I think that provides a, a pretty good closing. I know there's some more questions out there that we don't have time to get to. If, uh, yeah. if, you, want, if you want to tweet out any answers or anything like that, yeah. you, know, you can retweet tweet at, uh, at CloudSA. So just uh, feel free to do that. But I want to thank you just quite a bit. Or, uh, you're getting you're getting yeah. really good feedback from the audience on the passion sure. and the knowledge here, and this is something I think everybody should take a look at. So thank you All very right, much. And we really want to. We know that we're closing out here. We really want to invite you guys to QSC. If you have any questions in regards to our products or anything else, come out to Vegas. It's coming up in about a month or so. We've got a lot of really great opportunities, a lot of really great uh, situations, and it's free. It is a free conference. All you have to do is, is have room and board to come out. 
So if you're thinking about it, come on out, come meet me. I'd love to meet you. I'd love to talk with you about your options. Right. Thanks. Thanks very much, Chris. Thanks, everyone. We'll turn it back Thank to you. Hillary. All right. All right. Thank you so much, Chris and Jim, for presenting, and also a huge thank you to Qualis for sponsoring today's webinar. Um, obviously, the audience is loving the content. Um, for anyone who did not get their questions answered, um, the presenters will be able to follow up with you via email after we have concluded the webinar, so be on the lookout for that. If anyone does have additional questions that come up, you are welcome to email the research team at research at cloudsecurityalliance.org, and we'll connect you with our presenters today. And down below at the bottom of the screen, you'll find um, that there is a section to rate and review today's webinar. Um, please do so so we can figure out what you guys are enjoying and the things that we can improve upon. The recording of this webinar will be available within minutes of the conclusion. You can use the same link to rewatch. To view any of our other webinars or to sign up for new ones, you can go to cloudsecurityalliance.org slash research slash cloudvice. Thank you everyone so much for attending today's webinar and have a wonderful day.